scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. One more time, let's wave our beautiful hands to heaven and tell him thank you. Thank you for life, for grace, wisdom, preservation. Thank you, Jesus. 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 For in Jesus' matchless name we have worshipped. Hallelujah while the wonderful woman of god was ministering and then pastor nat came up you know i just stood quietly there and in all honestly i was thinking about my own life i was even lost in the worship it is true that god can help men it is true that god can lift men it is true that behind every extraordinary result whether men acknowledge it through their pride or otherwise god is the lifter of men and in the name of jesus christ he's lifting someone this morning i say it again that in the name of jesus my god is lifting someone this morning amen and amen now i just sense in my spirit that this is a very prophetic atmosphere and so i'm going to spend a few minutes that i have just speaking over our lives i'll just recap on a few things show us one key and then just speak over our lives let me encourage that our hearts be very sensitive the waters have been stirred and i believe that no one here present will return disappointed in the name of jesus so lord we look unto you again if you do not help us we remain helpless help us speak to us lift us by your word and by your spirit impart upon us the grace for the days ahead and to jesus be all the glory amen and amen please be seated thank you again pastor benza thank you sincerely and honor and salutations one more time to my dear friend and brother pastor nathaniel it was an awesome time this morning at the hallelujah challenge let's give jesus a big big hand clap amen now yesterday um i began a discussion here that um we began to talk about seasons according to ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1 the bible says to everything there is a season and then it says a time to every purpose under the heavens hallelujah i did tell us that god's dealings with men as far as the earth is concerned is fragmented into seasons hallelujah and we said that there are predictable seasons and sadly there are unpredictable seasons there are moments where an individual is given the liberty to even program your seasons for instance through the power of the spoken word through the power of the prophetic by engaging principles but there are times that seasons befall us sometimes unprepared for instance the sudden loss 
of a loved one for instance something tragic like it happened to the man job as we studied now the bible tells us and this was revealed through we took the dream of pharaoh the dream of pharaoh is a prophetic message about the reality of seasons hallelujah that seed time and harvest cold and heat summer and winter day and night will not cease now you are not given the liberty to necessarily select seasons but that the the believer can remain victorious in spite of whatever seasons are we together and the bible now tells us that the pharaoh went to bed and had a dream very strange and mysterious dream and in that dream he saw four well-fed fatted calves and then the lean ones would come to eat them seven of them seven cows and then seven lean ones would come to eat them then he saw also seven ears of corn well fed and then he saw seven pale sickly um you know um you know the the whole plants and they came and ate the ones that were well nourished and joseph in interpreting that dream said pharaoh you have seen the same thing this is established and it will not change god was only revealing to you the reality of seasons that in every man's life there will always be seven years of abundance followed by seven years of famine hallelujah you do not have to be a victim of the season but the seasons will come jesus himself said i must walk the works of him that sent me then he says while it is day and jesus says for the night cometh even for him when no man will walk again hallelujah and joseph interpreted the dream and gave us a solution i'm recapping very quickly because joseph's recommendation becomes for us the prophetic compass that we use to navigate seasons of uncertain times he told pharaoh here is the solution when you are in your season of abundance take 20 percent and begin to save for the seasons of famine are we together he was speaking in terms of economics but this is a principle that applies i told you that every negative season comes with a letter from uh, the next season of joy i am coming and every season of celebration comes with a letter from seasons that attempt to bring tragedy and pain i am also coming the assignment of the believer therefore is to be able to understand the systems of advantage that has been built in the kingdom so that whether you are in the season of famine or the season of abundance you will always be able to thrive in samaria the bible tells us that there was famine in the land is that true but did you realize that there were two people who were spared they were not victims of that famine number one the king number two the prophet the prophetic the priesthood and the king were exempted and the bible tells us that we happen to be both today that we are both kings and we are priests that means we have the immunity to stand and to thrive not just to survive but to thrive hallelujah four strategies i gave us and i'll just recap on it you want to thrive through these kinds of seasons when you are in your season of abundance use that opportunity to do four things number one we said build capacity in the seasons of abundance you take advantage of the leverage of ease you take advantage of the leverage of favorable opportunities to build capacity the chiefest of them being your spiritual capacity the angel speaks to elijah and says eat for the journey is far he ate a little and then went to bed and he tapped him he said eat again for the journey is far and the bible says he went in the strength of what he ate hallelujah it says if you turn aside in the day of battle there is such a day called the day of battle it says it is because your strength is small so number one you build capacity number two you build strategic relationships remember 
when you are in your season of abundance moments of ease moments of opportunity you leverage on that advantage to build strategic opportunities jesus himself was speaking and he said once upon a time there was a man who had visitors who came to his house late in the night and did not have a meal to serve them and he went to the house of his friend and knocked on that door and said friend please come out and help me and give me this and that i have visitors who suddenly came i didn't prepare for them but now they are here and i cannot leave them without you know refreshing them and the bible says the the friend said i am tired it's late i cannot come out but because of the advantage of friendship he came out and he insisted and gave him as many as he desired who hates you does not matter but in this kingdom who likes you matters hallelujah there are people today who have recycled seasons of pain in their lives because they did not take advantage of favorable seasons to build relationships relationship is an investment it will sting your ego it will cost you everything your resources it will cost you whatever it is but it is worth the price hallelujah there are children today who will never beg because their parents took out time to establish strategic relationships and whether dead or alive they have provided a platform for those ahead of them to be blessed may you be such a one in jesus name yeah. number three what do you do when you are in your season of abundance i said yesterday selflessly invest in being a blessing and in transforming as many we maximize seasons of blessings when we use the opportunities that come with those seasons to bless and to transform as many now you're not called to do everything you're not called to help everyone but let someone smile because you are alive let someone find hope because god brought you into a season of blessing and a season of abundance hallelujah genesis chapter 12 and verse 3 in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed in thee shall all the family of the earth be blessed it matters that you pay the price to selflessly invest in blessing and transforming people hallelujah the world does not celebrate people who are takers waiting for opportunities to amass for themselves the one problem with the rich fool i always wondered why such a combination would be accrued to a man because wealth and foolishness should not go hand in hand yet there is a man in the bible called the rich fool it takes a lot of wisdom to build riches but a man happened to combine both the rich fool and the foolishness was not because of the resources it was because he did not understand the purpose of the resources hallelujah and the bonds that he built was an example of what was in his heart and he built it and put his god there and said my soul find rest upon the fact that i have these resources and the lord said no you are foolish even though you are rich so the purpose of every opportunity god gives us is not just to be self-centered but to become an extension of his love an extension of his grace to be instruments of mercy hallelujah the hymn writer would say only remembered by what we have done i would always say that people do not care how much you know until they know how much you care and this is true are we learning and then number four we said we take advantage of seasons of plenty our seven years by studying and carefully following those who have been consistent through seasons one of the ways that you maximize your seasons of plenty is to study the lives of men and women who by grace have mastered the art of surviving seasons I told us yesterday do not trivialize consistency when you see it consistency is proof of mastery consistency means there is something you know there is something you have obtained that makes you remain 
in spite of changing seasons our world is full of people who once were great once were anointed once were influential once were wealthy and sadly they could not survive certain seasons and so when you see men and women who have extended their consistency through the seasons in business in ministry in family you have a healthy respect for them and then you follow those them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise hallelujah but now what do you do when sudden unfavorable seasons appear because they will i wish i could tell you they would not come they will sudden unfavorable seasons and for a case study yesterday we took the story of the man job that a man who the bible says feared the lord and eschewed evil and one day tragedy struck in the life of job back to back the death of his children the depletion of his estate the loss of his cattle everything just went haywire in the life of job i gave us three recommendations number one you must protect your joy at every cost the bible says in habakkuk 3 17 to 19 that though the fig tree would not blossom remember habakkuk 3 he says neither shall fruit be on the vine the labor of the olive shall fail and the field shall yield no meat the flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stalls he say yet somebody say yet yes. yet means in spite of i will rejoice not in the situation i will rejoice in the lord and i will joy in the god of my salvation can i tell you you must protect your joy it is better to lose money and have your joy with you it is better to lose a job as painful as it is you have not truly lost if your joy is still with you but it doesn't matter what you have around your life if you had to trade your joy for it it was an unwise bargain are we together when seasons unfavorable seasons the seven years of famine when they strike even if you do not know what to do start by protecting your joy by all means it says rejoice in the lord always and again i say again i repeat again i emphasize rejoice you have been taught that happiness is circumstantial it's a product of delight that is derived from the presence of results but when you do not have anything that is worthy of celebration joy is of the spirit only the holy ghost can truly bring joy and you can protect your joy you should protect your joy number two i said that we deal with unfavorable seasons when we learn to turn our pain to worship and thanksgiving that everything that is a source of pain can be used as the reason to worship mm job 1 20. please show it to us job chapter 1 and verse 20. the book of job chapter 1 and verse 20. watch this this was after the whole news the back-to-back -back tragedy was announced to job can you imagine a, a, a people lined up before job and imagine how broken the heart of this man would be if the news came and allowed some time for him to be able to you know to be able to come to that realization and to to just come to terms with it but back to back and here was his response the bible says at the end of the last tragic announcement then job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell upon the ground and worshiped how do you worship in the midst of this news of death loss depletion i do not know any man on earth in modern history who in within short a period of time went through this kind of tragedy losing your everything literally the only thing he had left was his god his wife and his life every other thing he had built including his children representing the potential for a great future everything left and the bible says he worshiped ah amazing 
I will sing, I will praise, even in my darkest hour, through the sorrow and the pain, I will sing, and I will praise, I lift my hands to honor you, because your word is true, I lift my hands to honor you. Because your word is true, I lift my voice to worship you. Because your word is true, I will sing. So when you experience tragedy, while men keep motivating you to curse God, you are a righteous man, you come to church all the time. How come you lost your child? You lost your job? Regardless the prophecy, the business still failed. Regardless the laying on of hands, it looks like the cancer is growing and now we stage four. Does that mean you have just a few months to leave? The Bible says Job bowed himself and worshiped. This is the truest demonstration of faith that you remain consistent in your worship even when it does not make sense. Hallelujah. To the point that the wife of Job, now I understand strangers, but the wife of Job said, why do you still hold on to your integrity? He said, curse God and die. At least we will know you have tried. You have survived too much pain to still call God faithful. You have survived too much pain. It does not make sense keeping your integrity. Uh -uh. Your life does not show any profiting in serving God again now that you have all kinds of boils why do you hold your integrity she said cause god and die but job said though he slay me yet will i trust him here's what he said all the days of my appointed time i will wait this is already a prophetic word for someone there are many believers who love the Lord and roll on the ground in the presence of opportunity. When you are in your seven years, promotions coming, children coming, wonderful things happening. But let me tell you, there are times I preached a message years ago called when God is silent. That the silence of God is a language. When God is silent, you must know he's saying something every time god does not reply you in the midst of pain god where are you when he is silent discern the voice of silence there is something the silence of god is saying hmm. isaiah 43 verse 1 and 2 says fear not i have redeemed you he says i have called you by name you are mine when you walk through the waters i will be with you through the rivers it shall not overwhelm you then it says when you walk through the fire it will not consume you say amen. amen number three what do you do when unfavorable seasons come upon you call upon the lord in prayer call upon the lord in prayer james chapter 5 and verse 13 is any man afflicted he says let him pray is any man afflicted that includes a businessman that includes a parent that includes someone in the hospital diagnosed with a condition that the doctors may not even really truly understand he says if any man among you afflicted king's court let him pray let him pray let him pray pray when seasons changed over jesus he was in gethsemane even as the son of god the word incarnate the bible says he prayed repeating the same words again let him pray and then verse 16 b tells us that the fervent and effectual prayer not of everyone the righteous the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous avail it much there is power that is generated when you pray because you will be learning that there are times where your season has come to an end 
like it happened to the nation of israel but satan leverages on it to continue negative seasons the prophecy over israel was that they will be in captivity for 400 years and it became 430 my assignment this morning is to scan by the lens of the spirit who has satan elongated negative seasons over that a season has come to an end and yet you are still suffering things that are not part of god's prophetic blueprint that's why the bible says to appoint unto them that mourn in zion to give them beauty for ashes are we together now yes the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness he says that they may be called the oaks or the trees of righteousness the planting of our god i like the tree you know the bible says he shall be like a tree and the tree is very powerful we do raining at dry seasons in nigeria when it is dry season the tree does not run away the tree has a strategy for survival until rain comes one of it is to shed its leaf and you will see a tree that was once blossoming looking green and lush looking pale and sickly it's not called weakness it's called endurance the tree remains every other thing is lost except the root is still standing it will it will lose the potential to bear fruit temporarily you would see the tree and it does not look like a pleasant sight you would not even come under it for shade because in many cases there are no leaves it's conserve it's conserving its energy while preparing the same tree that you see looking in a sorry state is building energy mm. he shall be like a tree he shall be like a tree hallelujah and then when the rain begins to come and you will be learning that the rain is the holy spirit ah isaiah 32 15 until the spirit be poured upon us from on high and then the wilderness will be counted for a fruitful field and a fruitful field be counted for a forest hallelujah and when rain comes within a moment sometimes shorter and faster than you can imagine the leaves come again the pot the potential to bear fruit was always there The potential to bear fruit was always there. It was not lost because of the... ...unfavorable season. favorable season hmm. are we learning you must learn to pray believers you can pray until seasons change you can remain father i will pray i don't have a job yet
I don't have a child yet. guide up your loins and pray and sometimes faster than you can imagine these seasons will come to an end according to the dream of pharaoh if you are seeing seven years of famine i can tell you it will not remain forever the only thing that is eternal is god himself there is no season that is um, eternal and remains forever seasons change as far as the earth remains seed time harvest cold heat summer winter ecclesiastes 3 says a time to laugh a time to cry that's why god gave you the ability to do both because you will need it at one point in your life there's nobody who has the ability to laugh alone there's nobody who has the ability to cry alone so when you see me cry know that within me is still the ability to laugh let seasons change and you will see that he's turned my mourning into dancing and my sorrow into joy don't give up your ability to laugh because you are crying. And don't give you up your ability to cry because you are laughing. You will need both. The wisdom of God made both available. There are times that even Jesus wept. Hmm. Hallelujah. Let me give you number four. The prophetic advantage. Every time you are in a negative season, please listen. Please listen. Let me have your attention every time you are in a season that you do not understand a season that spells woe and tragedy a season of uncertainty the moment you begin to pray among the many things you should look out for is the coming the introduction of the prophetic into your life and into your situation all through scripture when god's people were in unfavorable situations what happened to them was that god sent a prophet he saw the captivity of israel in egypt and here's what he told moses i have seen and heard the cry of my people as a result of their taskmasters he says and i am come down but we never saw him come physically he sent a deliverer called moses every time people cry in pain and every time a negative season is about to come to end god will always introduce to that space a prophetic voice now there is the prophetic as an office please look up and there is the prophetic as a spiritual operation not everybody is called to the office of the prophet but on account of the advantage of scripture everyone can operate the prophetic are we together now not everyone is called to the office of a prophet but everyone taking advantage of the ministry of the holy spirit and the word of god which is a more sure word of prophecy can express the prophetic there is no man who comes out of negative seasons ignoring the prophetic you search the scripture hmm. hallelujah i'm rejoicing already in my spirit because i know that someone you came to church but really what was happening in the spirit was that a door was opening before you and you were walking out of one season and entering into another you believe that shout a loud amen why is the prophetic very powerful number one because the prophetic has a unique ability to exert dominion over time the prophetic has the unique advantage of exerting dominion over time it can exert dominion over time it says to appoint unto them that mourn in zion you know what that means to fix a date for their deliverance to appoint does not mean to discuss whether they want to be delivered the man was at the pool of bethesda for 38 years hallelujah when jesus showed up he did not have to wait for the stirring of the water again the moment jesus showed up and spoke a season opened unto him 
hallelujah yeah it is true that seasons must run their course in your life but i can tell you the moment the prophetic comes it has a unique advantage of exerting dominion over time we do not know how long samaria here's what he said by this time tomorrow how do you make such an audacious statement i understand making such a statement over an individual but a whole nation by this time tomorrow can i speak that to someone in the name of jesus the one who helps men i prophesy to you that by this time tomorrow may my god turn your mourning to dancing may my god turn your sorrow to joy in the name of jesus christ please be seated it is the process and the season that takes time the deliverance is usually instant ask joseph he was in the prison not knowing he was hours away to leave the prison and exact dominion over it my bible says and the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon hmm. the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon the prophetic is very powerful sadly i know that it's been abused on many fronts but i can tell you sincerely when god wants to lift you and bring you to your prophetic season or out of a season of tragedy you must encounter the prophetic jesus as the son of god had to encounter three prophets for his destiny to be opened number one simeon the prophet number two anna the prophetess number three john the baptist coming in the spirit of elijah that the son of the living god as the word incarnate you would think because he came from heaven he would glide through seasons like that mm -mm. Ah, i rejoice already i'm telling you i i know when this water is stirred in my spirit someone will be rejoicing after this service do you believe what you are hearing abraham even though there was destiny and prophecy upon his head his heavens were closed until he met a strange entity called melchizedek he received tight of abraham and hear the kind of strange blessing he gave him he said blessed be abraham son of the most high possessor of the heavens and the earth ah. Ay, 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 glory be to God. God, that's someone's song. Ay, 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 glory be to God. Ay, 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 say, ay, 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 glory be to God. I I I Hallelujah Hallelujah Glory be to God Hallelujah Hallelujah Glory be to God I I I I I Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory be to God. Listen, I'm, on, I'm already giving you your song as you make your triumphant entry. Hey, Balako, see That you leave church and you begin to dance and celebrate. Why? Listen, when Saul met with Samuel, the Bible says as soon as he met with Samuel, number one, the donkey that was missing began to find its way home. So restoration is possible, not under every condition. I hope you know the first thing God restores is time. Because the greatest loss a man can have is the loss of time. And I will restore the years, he says. Mm hallelujah the prophetic is powerful 
I tell you, happy is the man that genuinely encounters a prophetic grace. Please sit down. Let me show you one thing about the prophetic and then we'll pray. Don't tempt me. I resist that temptation. But not help me. All these my people will have to help me now. Amen and amen and amen. Ah, this thing is on me now. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, sir. When Elisha said, by this time tomorrow, he was not giving them a privileged information. He was creating what would happen. Are we together now? There are two dimensions to the prophetic. Believers, please understand. There is the revelatory dimension of the prophetic. So God by his servant reveals things. Some you know, some you do not know. The purpose is to encourage your faith that God is aware of you and your condition and your situation. And then to give you guidance. But the more superior dimension of the prophetic is the creative dimension of the prophetic this is not god giving you a privileged information he's programming a possibility that had no business happening hmm. so when he says by this time tomorrow he was not revealing what would have happened anyway let me tell you how listen i'm on i'm already giving you your song as you make your triumphant entry that you leave church and you begin to dance and celebrate why listen when saul met with samuel the bible says as soon as he met with samuel number one the donkey that was missing began to find its way home so restoration is possible not under every condition i hope you know the first thing god restores is time because the greatest loss a man can have is the loss of time and i will restore the years he says mm. hallelujah the prophetic is powerful i tell you happy is the man that genuinely encounters a prophetic grace please sit down let me show you one thing about the prophetic and then we'll pray don't tempt me i resist that temptation pastor not help me all these my people will have to help me now amen and amen and amen ah this thing is on me now praise the name of the lord yes, sir. When Elisha said, 
by this time tomorrow he was not giving them a privileged information he was creating what would happen are, are we together now there are two dimensions to the prophetic believers please understand there is the revelatory dimension of the prophetic so god by his servant reveals things some you know some you do not know the purpose is to encourage your faith that god is aware of you and your condition and your situation and then to give you guidance but the most superior dimension of the prophetic is the creative dimension of the prophetic this is not god giving you a privileged information he's programming a possibility that had no business happening so when he says by this time tomorrow he was not revealing what would have happened anyway let me tell you how prophecy comes to pass i was sharing with my people now when a prophetic word is released if it is true that it came from god the first thing that happens is that the holy spirit manifests as the spirit of wisdom and it begins to source for the human vessels that must partner with that prophecy to bring it to pass so if i prophesy and say may god open your doors you say amen you have received let me tell you what happens the spirit of wisdom begins to go around lagos there must be an individual he is the producer of that movie he will bring the actors together that makes that word come to pass and how it will happen leave it to his creativity if there is no available actor in nigeria he will go to america south africa and pick a willing vessel but by all means that word must come to pass are we together now so the prophet says you will not see wind you will not see rain yet by a mystery you do not understand because the bible says listen carefully when it has to do with god it said just as you do not know the ways of the wind nor how bones are formed in her that is with child that is how you do not know the ways of god the ways of god are beyond science sometimes it does not conform to logic that is why he's called god hmm. is someone learning the prophetic is powerful i do not know any man who transited seasons especially from the negative to a season of envy and glory without the prophetic coming in yes sir so baby jesus is taken to the temple first place is taken to and then he meets this strange woman who had been praying for his arrival for over 60 years she holds him and says behold the consolation of israel she never called him a baby then simeon the prophet lifted him and spoke over him your jesus walked under a close heaven for 30 years even as the word until he met this mysterious prophet who came in the spirit and the power of elijah called john because the protocol is that before the day of the lord elijah must proceed elijah always precedes the day of the lord and so jesus would never manifest until elijah precedes him so john comes in the spirit and the power of elijah are we learning now and john looks at him and says behold the lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world he says i am not worthy to untie even the latchet of your shoe and jesus said suffer it to be so so that the scripture would be fulfilled and as soon as he baptized him in water your bible my bible says and the heavens opened and there was a voice that spoke from heaven this is my beloved son are we together now in whom i am well pleased and his life changed the holy spirit came upon him acts 10 38 now says how god anointed jesus who anointed jesus but it had to happen at the instance of the prophetic why was he not anointed from birth why was he not anointed while he was praying or while he was in the temple it was at the point where he encountered prophet john that that anointing came anointed jesus with the holy ghost and with power and he went about doing good healing all they that were oppressed of the devil 
ladies and gentlemen please hear me i sense in my spirit that as we celebrate these 28 years with the king's court i believe with all my heart that there are people here the truth is that these seasons have actually come to an end the devil wants to lie to you and make you continue in pain that is needless the hymn writer says oh what needless pain we bear mm. romans 8 18 says um how does he put it now it says but our light affliction give it to us please i reckon that the sufferings of this present time someone say this present time so every suffering and every constraint has a timing and when it goes out of the jurisdiction of his timing it becomes warfare you don't sit down and fold your arms and allow negative seasons to continue indefinitely did you hear what i said the bible says after you have suffered a while some of you that timing is too much is inconsistent with the law of seasons your pain has lasted for 10 20 years it's no longer it cannot be the will of god this is not just seasons rotating satan is stopping the other side of the season from coming and the assignment of the prophetic is to come as a midwife to say thus have you come and no further shall you go you believe that yes sir in the name of jesus christ you have to believe that there are many people who have become victims of negative seasons negative seasons they have trusted god they have prayed you have done everything but the last step the prophetic i can tell you my life today is a product of prophetic a, a prophetic push can literally bring to end negative seasons in your life believe me when i tell you this saul would have gone around searching in futility for his father's donkey but the servant told him you know what we've tried we've stretched ourselves let's not waste more time there is a prophet there is a prophet i think it was south africa I was speaking in and i said truly god gave gifts to men i can tell you sincerely god gave gifts to men and you can remain in a situation needlessly whereas with one minute of genuine prophetic declaration you would see our father in the lord stand and say there is somebody here the lord is saying i should tell you as casual as it sounds people say amen and the realm of the spirit stamps it and doors begin to open ah Paul and Silas stayed in the prison, but they knew that negative seasons have an expiry date. The moment it was midnight. What is midnight? The door that connects yesterday and today. Midnight is the name given to the door that connects your yesterday and today. Did you hear what I said? Every yesterday must have an exit door. If you've not found it, it's demonic. You better find your exit door. Don't just find entry alone. According to God's program, you find entry an exit so if i'm in a season where i'm in the valley of the shadow of death i found the entry door i may not even know how i entered but i keep searching around if i don't find an exit door i call jesus into that situation to be the door he now becomes my passage because he said i am the door anywhere jesus stands becomes the door out of that situation i am the door is someone learning now yes at midnight paul and silas said listen this is the end of it we have tried we have endured for only god knows how many hours let's engage the mysteries that get us out of this place the bible says paul and silas prayed and they sang it was loud enough everyone heard them ah suddenly suddenly king's court suddenly please hear me there are three ways that doors open in the life of a man to usher him into new seasons. Number one is by the use of correct keys. The first way a door opens is when you engage the right key, not a key. Are we together now? You open doors, the door to your vehicle, the door to your house, when you use the right key. The second way doors open according to scripture is by knocking the power of relationships when you knock the person at the other side must be willing to open for you so if you don't have a relationship with him you will remain outside are we together the bible says everyone that knocketh 
it shall be open to him but the third way does open when the keys don't seem to work and the individuals don't seem to happen learn that from paul and silas the bible says they prayed they sang suddenly my god there was an earthquake watch this now and that when the earthquake came it affected the foundation of the prison and then he says immediately how soon immediately all doors open that one is not a door that just opens by the knob turning you uproot the foundation holding the door so that it gets out of the way because sometimes the door can be open for you but close against your children and there are times you need the door open permanently in a few minutes as i speak someone is not the door you open the foundation holding the door you are carrying it like samson samson removed the city gate and carried it and climbed the mountain to keep it there ah. I, 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 glory be to god I, 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 glory be to god I, 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 say Hallelujah, 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 praise the name of the Lord. Mm. I sense in my heart that a family, an individual, a business has come to the end of certain negative cycles unfavorable seasons watch this i'm hearing a statement in my spirit and i want us to use it as a prayer point and then i just speak over our lives my goodness i just sense that god is going to blow up this roof in a few minutes watch this the bible tells us that jesus was his, with his disciples and then prophetically he tells them that our brother lazarus sleepeth and they said if he sleepeth it's good for him because he's not been well and he said no he's dead and after three days he says come let's go and raise him i'm speaking over someone now and the bible says when they got there martha saw him and said why if you were here earlier our brother lazarus would not be dead and then she made a profound statement and here is the word even now even now even now if i had heard what you are saying now in january i would not prolong this pain till october however even now someone tell yourself even now let the devil hear you even now i've carried the sickness needlessly but even now even now even now even now someone declare let faith rise even now in the name of jesus even now at this 28th anniversary in the presence of worshipers and vessels of honor even now even now even now watch this now even now he says whatever you ask of god and if you think even now does not work ask hezekiah a genuine prophet comes to hezekiah and says put your house in order i am a genuine prophet i have a prophetic word this season that has come will not change it will end with you dying hezekiah said i respect your prophetic ministry go and he turned his face even now he says lord remember mm. someone is about to prophesy you will be the first prophet of your life say father one more time say father even now show up for me even now rewrite my story even now take me out of negative seasons open your mouth and pray in one minute father even now even now even now, even now. 
Even now. Even now. Even now. Someone is praying. Even now. Over my finances. Even now. Over my ministry. Even now. Over my business. Even now. You can change seasons. Even now. You are El Shaddai. The multi breasted one. Someone pray. Even now. Even now. Even now, at stage four, even now, you are still the healer. After 12 years being buried, even now, the changer of seasons. Ah, but so not, I'm standing here and I'm just sensing in my spirit. Remember that our chant of this morning. Adonai. Adonai Call his name Adonai Listen, listen Adonai, 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 Adonai Say Prophesy, Adonai, 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 come on, Adonai, 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 sing, prophesy, declare, prophesy, someone rejoice, come on, Adonai. Prophetically, you are finally finding the exit door. After 10 years, the exit door appears. After 20 years, the exit door from shame to honor, from depression to lifting. Can we chant this one more time? Adonai, Adonai, You are the door say it again father you are my door lead me out of this season to a new season of honor open your mouth and pray you are the door you are the door adore the door adore the way adore the truth Hey, 
Now hear this. I'm going to ask Pastor Nat to blast the trumpet. Watch this. Every time there is a sound of the trumpet, there is always a change of season. Hallelujah. Every time the sound of the trumpet signifies the end of a season and the beginning of another when you hear the sound of the trumpet you become the prophet of your destiny and begin to lead yourself into a triumphant entry in the name of jesus whatever prophetic action you find comfortable some of you may need to walk forward some of you may need to lift your hands in joy but by all means as you hear the sound of the trumpet begin to declare seasons of pain you have come to an end seasons of shame you have come to an end seasons of embarrassment in the name of jesus you believe this go ahead oh i decree and declare seasons of shame you come to an end in the name of jesus by the power that raised Christ from the dead. I go forward. 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 I advance into new realms, into new seasons. King's God, prophesy upon yourself. Schedule a triumphant entry out of shame, out of obscurity. Hallelujah. The last shot of Kosa Krata Kata Prakata Peleka Tokatos. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Our mouths were filled with laughter, and they said among the hidden, The Lord had done great things for them. It says the Lord has done great things for us whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity like the streams of the negative. Take one minute. You are not wasting your time. You are leading in the spirit. A triumphant entry. 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 Adonai, 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 Exodus 14 14. Please give it to us. Exodus 14 14. My God. Ah. Hear me. There is a name that God is called. He is not only Savior, He is not only Deliverer, He is called a mighty warrior. Do you know what that name means? The Bible says, Who is this King of glory? It says the Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty. And that might is only demonstrated in battle. Hallelujah. That the Lord can stand behind a man as a mighty terrible one. The Lord can stand behind a destiny. Defending it with his jealousy. Did the Bible not say jealousy is the rage of a man? When you touch the bride of a man, you provoke jealousy. And the Bible calls you the bride of Christ. This will be your next prayer point, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know about you, but the Lord will fight for Joshua Selman. And I will hold my peace. Ah, there are battles that are not your own. The Lord will fight for you. 
Say, Father, arise. Father, arise. Establish victory in my life. Go ahead and pray. Arise. Arise. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Do you believe what is happening here? You see, these are the mysteries of the kingdom. They don't make sense. Just help those under the anointing. It may not make sense to an ordinary person. But I tell you, you are commanding results in the spirit. You will just see that your days unfold with miracles scheduled before you. These are the mysteries of the kingdom. The Bible calls it the hidden wisdom of God ordained for our glory. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I have a few minutes. I'm going to speak over your life. I'm going to leave Pastor and the dear woman of God in the next five minutes. They are going to provoke prophetic worship. There is a reason why I'm saying that. You see, I was saying it during the Hallelujah Challenge. It was the celebration and the dance of a small girl that removed the head of a prophet. As prophetic as John was, what warriors could not do? Hallelujah. The prophetic is powerful. The prophetic is powerful, I tell you. The Bible says, I will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These sounds are no ordinary sounds. I believe that it's for someone's destiny that God created this combination this morning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because truly, he gave gifts to men. This God gave gifts to men. And in the next five minutes, as this prophetic mistress lifts songs of worship, whether you are lying down, whether you are, I don't know what you want to do. I leave you with God, your deliverer, God, your maker, God, the changer of times and seasons. Hallelujah. And then after that, I will be praying for you. You're sick in your body. You've been oppressed certain seasons, maybe financial situations. You see, the world does not know the prophetic dimension of thriving in uncertain times i respect business principles and they are true i respect economic principles and they are true but all samaria when all fails the prophetic still works hmm. are we together sir over to you please
Hallelujah. Jeremiah 20, 10 and 11. Please be sensitive. I'm speaking over your life now. Jeremiah chapter 20, 10 and 11. I'll read verse 10 and then you will read 11. For I heard the defaming of many. Fear on every side. Report they say and we will report it. All my familiars watch for my halting, saying, Per adventure he will be enticed, and we shall prevail against him and take our revenge on him. Let a, a, a believing Christian shout, verse 11. But the Lord is with me as a mighty, terrible one. Therefore, my persecutors shall stumble, and they shall not prevail, they shall be greatly ashamed for they shall not prosper their everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten yes. hallelujah yes. can i tell you when you invest time to engage the prophetic in praise in prayer and then receiving prophetic declarations you will marvel and wonder this is how some of us came by the foolishness of the mysteries of the kingdom we ascended these ladders by grace listen for someone god is saying just just embrace the foolishness of the prophetic for a moment forget about your prior experiences perhaps with wrong people or whatever it is open up your spirit and believe that in a moment the story of your life can be rewritten I want to stand upon the grace of our father and the Lord daddy Gio and stand upon the grace of the angel over this house pastor Ben and I want to make certain prophetic declarations I'm standing here under the corporate anointing with God's people's backing me for someone who has the heart to believe you stand and watch the way seasons move like wind shifting things and changing seasons for you in the name of Jesus everything that represents shame reproach in your life i call upon the god of heaven the one who backs and honors men may that season come to an end now may that season come to an end now may that season come to an end now listen for everyone here they have asked you where is your god may your results answer them i say it again may your results answer them in the name of jesus christ you have turned my morning into dancing 
and you have turned my sorrow to joy let me pray for someone from that prison place in the name of jesus let an earthquake rattle that prison and cause all doors to be open financial doors open marital doors open doors of fruitfulness be open doors of lifting be open career doors be open in the name of jesus christ hallelujah the bible tells us that there was a man in the in scripture called mordecai they wanted to kill the king one time and mordecai heard the news and by his intervention the king's life was preserved but the man was not rewarded there are many of you who have been part of the rising of many the stories of many you midwife them into prophetic seasons yet like like joseph they forgot you my bible says that night could not king ahazeros sleep he said bring me the chronicles and they opened it and found there where mordecai saved his life but was not rewarded let me prophesy to someone in the name of jesus the son of the living god for your sake and on this 28th anniversary may the book of remembrance be open 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 in the name of jesus christ are you ready for a prophetic action exodus 14 15 i want to preach and speak according to the word that the lord gave moses and the lord said to joshua selman wherefore criest thou to me speak to the people at the king's court and tell them that they go forward can i prophesy to you go forward go forward go forward go forward i prophesied in business go forward no more backward go forward go forward by the anointing go forward i prophesy go forward go forward go forward speed to your destiny speed to your destiny speed to your destiny go forward as a businessman go forward as a man of god go forward as a student go forward as an administrator go forward in the name of jesus go forward go forward and every power that stands your way let me prophesy to it who are down mountain before zerubbabel who are down mountain before the king's court at the shout of grace 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 someone say grace say grace say grace say grace say grace in the name of jesus christ hallelujah at the shout of grace I will say it one more time don't be tired your sacrifice this morning is a worthy bargain i assure you you will have a reason to rejoice i say it again who are down mountain before this family the mountain of cancer the mountain of joblessness the mountain of barrenness i call upon the god of jeshuron the one who rides upon the wings of the wind in the name of jesus may that mountain be lifted 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 help those under the anointing may that mountain be lifted may that mountain be lifted I say it may that mountain be lifted now let me prophesy by this time tomorrow I call upon the God of my covenant that in the name of Jesus the one who died and rose again 
May my God wipe your tears. May my God give you a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Be glorified, hallelujah, be glorified. Please return to your seat. Be glorified. Please listen to me for someone here perhaps you are a victim of your background you have struggled you have suffered you've done everything you know how to do when the axe head sank they said alas master it was borrowed and the prophet came and said where fell it i want to locate something that has been missing in your life now where fell it where did the opportunity fall into Paracosiata. where did your influence fall into perhaps when you were careless it fell ah there is hope for a tree at the scent of water please please don't be distracted believe me we're not wasting your time he went to the prophet and said where fell it for someone where did your investment fall into that today you have been called Ichabod. People look at you and say, what happened? But the Lord can change a man's name from Ichabod to Beulah and Hephzibah. The delight, a well-watered garden in the name of Jesus. Wherever that axe head has fallen, I hope you know it was with the axe head that they used to cut the wood to establish themselves the basis of that story was that they told the prophet where we meet with you is too small it was a desire to go forward it was a desire to expand it was a desire to be established and then in that process the axe head fell and the guy said it was borrowed i'm in two troubles now i can't build and i must repay hallelujah and the prophet said not to worry there are infinite possibilities in the kingdom just show me where it fell and the bible says he took a stick you know what a stick is it is another word for an earthen vessel that the excellency of power may be of god a strategy that does not make sense and he threw it there and the bible says the axe head i decree and declare over your life everything you have lost it doesn't matter how it left you by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I call it back to your life. I call it back to your life. I call it back to your destiny, back to your family. I call back relationships. I call back resources. I call back opportunities in the name of Jesus. Finally, finally give me the honor and the joy of introducing Jesus to someone tonight or perhaps reminding you that in spite of the prophetic in spite of the sounds of the trumpet in spite of the excellency of vocal prowess none of us in ourselves can administer salvation to any 
for the bible says there is no other name under heaven given unto men the name of joshua selman cannot administer salvation we are only vessels mandated to reveal him there's someone in church right now scattered across the many who are in this auditorium and the many others who are following by way of television by way of internet whilst hearing the worshipers the word the prophetic declarations the spirit of god began to convict you that one prayer of faith can change not just a season but even your destiny the bible says for god so loved the world jesus speaking to nicodemus that he gave his only begotten son it says that whosoever that blessing is for whosoever there are some things that the bible will say he gave unto some but not salvation it is for whosoever whosoever believeth on him should not perish it says but have life everlasting verse 17 says for god did not send his son into the world to condemn it but that the world through him might be saved hallelujah so i want to make an altar call most times when people hear altar calls they frown at it because they think it's something to be embarrassed imagine that you are being given an award except that this is the greatest blessing you can ever have in this side of god's kingdom not a thing a person the son of the living god right now standing in this place with all the wonderful worshipers and the many who are here connecting by faith i want to call someone win that war of destiny once and for all you have the power to ignore what i'm saying you have the power to reject jesus and you will respect your decision like many are and today they are in hell there is only one way that way is jesus it is not a formula it is a person and for someone here you might be saying apostle i remember making this decision but in truth i cannot say that i'm walking in the ways of the lord right now i want to make a genuine decision I think I'm a nice person, but I cannot remember having any salvation experience. There are no assumptions with salvation. Hallelujah. So as I make the altar call in the manner of our Father and the Lord, I'm going to count one to five. Wherever you are, don't wait for anyone to come before you come. This is between you and your maker, the King of glory. I want you to run as I count one to five, like there's fire on the mountain. Come and stand here. And don't just stand looking at me. Stand with your heart opened. clear the way for them as they come there is always room at the cross let's celebrate salvation king's court this is what the lord is doing three come to jesus young and old male and female come come in the name of jesus come There is only one name. There is only one name. Keep coming with power to save. With power to save. There is only one name. There is only one name. Are you coming? Please make your way to the front. Power to save. Power to save. Come. Come to Jesus. I salute every one of you, my dear brothers and sisters. When it has to do with the business of Jesus, there is no shame. I assure you, this is the wisest decision 
you would have made in this side of God's kingdom. Now you will be given a card. There's a green card. There are counselors who will be handing a card. What I would want you to do is after the prayer, may I please request that you fill it legibly with your correct details and they will collect it and follow up to ensure that you are established in the faith and for those who have made this decision online i believe that there should be links on the social media platform of the king's court please do well to let us know that you've made jesus lord of your life so that a few officials can reach you and help you to be established in righteousness hallelujah please lift your right hand as a sign of surrender to this king and savior and say this after me as loud and as clear as you can say lord jesus I have heard your word and I believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for my sin I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior as my Lord and as my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from today i am a child of god i go forward ever and backward never amen keep your beautiful hands lifted father i present to you these ones they have come declaring the lordship of jesus over their lives and by the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven i call you bona fide recipients of the life of god the grace to walk in the righteousness of god and to live victorious christian lives let it be imparted upon you for in jesus name we pray is someone guiding me okay now there are counselors our auntie is waving our hands just behind me may i please request all of you just move in concert and then they will have a word with you and you'll be back let's give them a big hand clap hallelujah hallelujah thank you i want to thank my brother and my sister i have just one more assignment i see from the timer that i have four minutes listen i don't think we would have done justice to this conference without praying for nigeria is that fine if we pray for Nigeria? Is it alright if we speak over our nation? And then, thank God we have other nations. She's representing South Africa. So we'd also declare over Africa. I am, I am totally, I believe with all my heart that Africa is the continent that will present Jesus and the gospel accurately before he returns. Most continents have had their opportunity. This is Africa's time. It's a Kairos moment and we must maximize it with wisdom, with diligence, with humility and with grace. Hallelujah. And so we're going to pray for this nation. Complaining about the government, complaining about the leaders, pointing fingers. Fire for fire will end all of us in ashes. The proper scriptural ways to cry unto the God of heaven. To say, Lord, you are the ruler over nations. The Bible says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Hallelujah. May I please request in one minute that you raise a cry from where you are over Nigeria. I wish, I, I, I wish we could have the flag of Nigeria, but that's fine. I want us to pray. Oh, beautiful. There you have it. Go ahead. You can stretch your hands prophetically and say, Lord, heal our land. Go ahead and pray. Heal our land politically. Heal our land economically. We are praying for Nigeria now. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Yes, sir. Pray for the nation. We come against the spirit of terrorism. We come against corruption and prejudices of all kinds. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are calling upon the God of heaven that you will arise as the God of power that you are step in oh god in the name of jesus lord that you help us drive this vehicle called nigeria so that we get to a safe heaven someone is praying pray for nigeria pray for the presidency pray for the senate pray for the house the national assembly 
pray for the local government chairman the governors the ministers that they will administer leadership in righteousness and in justice go ahead and pray that development will come to our land that the name of jesus will be exalted across the length and the breadth of this nation speak over all the six geopolitical zones that in the name of jesus we lift up jesus crime violence irresponsibility we come against this spirit in the name of jesus we prophesy that a new nigeria is emerging by the spirit of the living god a new nigeria is emerging by the power of the holy ghost now pray for africa go ahead and pray pray for south africa pray for malawi pray for kenya pray for ghana go ahead decree and declare in the name of jesus arise over this continent of africa let one sound come out of africa let one sound come out of africa exalting jesus and throning him across and above the nations hallelujah finally pray for the king's court that the next 28 years will be greater by far than this first 28 years and if christ tarries everyone doing this prayer must be alive open your mouth and pray in one minute father we prophesy first thanking you for the first 28 years thank you oh god for your choice servant our father pastor ben and his dear wife the eldership the leadership of this church thank you for the sons and daughters who have been raised by this assembly go ahead and pray that the word of god will come upon this altar in season with power in season with grace that this house remains a place of transformation a place of discipleship a place of encounters a place of worship in the name of jesus pray for the women ministry pray for the men pray for the youth pray for the teenagers pray for the children one generation will declare his praise to another for in jesus mighty name we have prayed i want to sincerely say a very big thank you it's not my first time coming here but i do not take the love and the honor pastor sir thank you sincerely from the depth of my heart for the love and the opportunity that you always provide to bless this church and to bless the nations i want to thank the woman of god thank you so much such a beautiful spirit and thank my dear friend and brother pastor nat in the name of jesus i speak over everyone may you go from glory to glory in jesus name we pray amen give jesus a big hand of praise Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words, let them not depart from thy eyes, and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.